innovative open source projects made by incredibly motivated students, coaches, and organizations. Hi, Open Summer of Code. Coaches, students, volunteers, anyone is welcome to follow this tutorial on how to do a scoping session. A scoping session is going to make sure you have your ducks in a row, your noses pointed in the same direction, and is going to help you and the team figure out what to build first. Conduct a scoping session whenever you think the team needs it. At the start of a project, to get aligned, in the middle of a project, when things get a little chaotic, or somewhere in between. It's always useful. Do it often. You can invite your client if you like. Sometimes you just have to figure out things with the team, just the team. But other times, it's very useful to get that specific, precious client input. Before you start your scoping session, make sure you've got your setup in place. When you're doing a live scoping session, just make sure everybody has their post-it notes and a marker. When you're doing a remote session, you have a couple of options. For instance, you could use collaborative tools like Miro or Figma, create your little post-it notes there and work on it together. Get your minds out there. Something else that's very important Make sure that you have some time. This is going to take some time and make sure people have the time to write things down to form their thoughts. Not everybody is very extroverted, but as you know, people that are quiet also have very valuable things to contribute. So create space for that. Disclaimer for coaches and clients. Students should be able to take ownership over what they're going to build. So let them take the upper hand. You can always pitch in if they need help or forget essential things, but they should do most of the talking. You're here as a guide and to support them. And last but not least in the preparation of your scoping session, everybody needs to understand the briefing that the client has sent to you. Everybody needs to have read up on all the information and documents that the client has sent. When everybody is aligned, understands the story, and knows what the goal is, you're good to go. An example of a simple goal could be, um, we find a way to make sure that people can signal that they've lost a pet in the neighborhood and that their friendly neighbors can help find them. Let's pretend that this is an awesome project and that we can get started now. There are countless ways to do a scoping session, so if you have yours, go ahead and take that one. But I like to use a method called SLIP. You can find this method in the book The Laws of Simplicity, written by John Maida. SLIP stands for Sort, Label, Integrate and Prioritize. Let me break it down for you. First off, we start with sorting. Give everybody a couple of minutes to write down all the needs, features, ideas, requests that they found in the briefing. They can write it all down on post-it notes, real ones or virtual ones, or put it down in the chat and the other person that took the lead can put it on the wall. This will just be a chaotic mess of post-it notes. Think of uploading a picture of a lost pet. Now think of removing it or editing it. And what about pictures of owners? Do we need those? After you've created a lovely mess of post-it notes, it's time to label them. That means categorizing and grouping your post-it notes and putting a suiting label on top. For instance, if the client specified certain needs in terms of viewing lost pets or posting lost pets, those could be two separate categories. You could also have a category listing all the functionalities you need for logging in and another one for logging out. Be creative. You'll figure it out together with the team. The chaos has been reduced, but we can help ourselves a little bit more for when we are actually going to build things. And that's why we use integrate. Integrate means breaking up large groups of post-it notes, usually means a lot of tasks. On the other hand, you might have small groups that have similarities and you want to join those groups. For instance, 
you might have a big group called viewing posts. You could break that group up into two smaller groups, namely the feed, one where you scroll through all the posts of lost pets, and viewing the post, where you get some more details and you get to zoom in on some pictures, for instance. Your post-its look pretty good right now. A lot of good ideas, but also a lot of work. Probably not feasible in just four weeks. You just met your team. A lot of chaos can happen, a lot of things can go wrong. So we need to start cutting. This is why this step, prioritize, exists. For each group, make sure you know what the priority is. What is most important to be built? But be ruthless here. Make it tiny. Imagine, what am I going to build in a day? What am I going to build in three days? What am I going to build in a week? Don't plan for four weeks yet, please. Keep it small and be ruthless together. Make sure you get to the core and know what's important. An example, the client asked for a functionality emergency call for when somebody found a pet somewhere so they can reach the owner quickly. Maybe this is not so important in the first phase because we don't even know if people will put up pets in the first place. Another example is, is it necessary to create a profile or do we first want to see if people would use it anyways and even need a profile? You could probably throw out the entire category if that's the case. In this step, it's crucial to know what skills you have in the team. Only select things you know you can handle as a team and leave out the things you cannot. You're done. This probably took some time, especially if this was your first scoping session. But now it's time to get the work. As a team, you take a look at the post-it notes that made it through the selection. These are stories that need to come true. So everybody in the team needs to take a look and see how can I make this story come true with my skills. Head over to our YouTube channel and look for the also tutorial on project management and we'll tell you all about how to get started. Without clients, we would have no projects. And they're probably dying to know what you've been up to, what you're going to do, and if you're headed in the right direction. So communicate often and communicate clear. Make a deal how often you will communicate and where. This could be via email, via video conference. You decide together how often you need it. The most important thing is that you manage expectations. Don't overpromise and make sure that you're honest and you'll be just fine. Good luck and see you soon.